All right, today we're going to be testing different grades of thread locker. These are all by Loctite. We got 243, 271, and 290. So these are both thicker and they're designed to be put on while you're assembling the product. This one is wicking, so it's designed to be put on after you've already assembled everything. And according to the instructions, they say to put on a couple of drops and adjust as needed for the size of the bolt. So I'm going to be testing it on these bolts and nuts. These are all M16. Now the weird thing is, the people who use this stuff every day, they it seems like nobody really has a consistent measurement to how you're actually supposed to put this on. Some people just say put on one drop. Some people say to group the whole thing up. And then you feel like, how long it takes to cure. Some people say wait 10 minutes, some people say it's instant, some people say 24 hours. So according to the Loctite, the first two set in 10 minutes and then take 24 hours to fully cure. The Loctite 290 takes 20 minutes to set and then takes 24 hours to cure. So I'm just gonna apply these all. I'm gonna give it a full 24 hours. As a control, I'm gonna be doing the first one without any Loctite, no thread locker at all. And I'm going to set everything to 15 foot pounds. Okay. Now on the first bolt for 243, I'm going to do droplets. All right, so we got three droplets. And I'll spin that on. And I'll give that 15 foot pounds. But I also want to know if I put a couple drops without tightening it up, will that make any difference? Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm just going to goop it up. Same stuff, this is still a 243, and spin that on. Oop, went to 5.1, that's okay. And now I want to see what it looks like if I goober this guy up. And just do that with no torque. So now it's time for the red, 271. Oh, 15.2. All right. And now the goober. Okay, 15. So now it is time for the wicking stuff, the 290. Now the problem with this stuff is you can't really drop it on because it just falls right off. So I'm going to do one that's just an assembly with two drops. I guess we ought to do the same thing. So we did three drops with all the other ones. We'll do three drops with this one as well. It doesn't really matter because it all just drains off the bottom. Okay, and then three drops here. And quick assembly. So now I want to use it as intended, and I'm going to torque it first. Also keeping in mind that 15 foot-pounds is nothing for these bolts. They're, uh, they're designed for 200 to 270 almost. Okay, and I'll give it three drops right on top. So this stuff is wicking, that means it's supposed to penetrate and then seal. It's also worth mentioning that they got even better stuff than this. The highest I've heard of is 680, which is actually designed to seal shafts. So if you had something that had no threads, but you wanted that to lock together, that's what you'd use that for. But this is the stuff that we commonly use, and really it's just been kind of a guessing game as to what this stuff actually does, like how much it actually helps. We kind of just go by feel where if we just want general assembly, we use this. If we want something that's not gonna vibrate apart, we use this. And then for heavy duty applications where it would be critical if this thing came apart, we use that. But it's also worth keeping in mind when we start using this, this and that, we usually have to use heat to get it apart. So I want to find out exactly how much torque it takes to get these things apart. I'm going to give it 24 hours, come back to it, and we'll see what happens. All right, so first for the control, there is no thread locker on this bolt. Thirteen point two. Okay, this is the three drops of thread locker. So first the untorqued bolt. Wow, 19, interesting. That is actually considerably more than I was expecting. And we also have pretty even coverage all the way around. So same bolt with the three drops of 243. So 
32.1. Okay. And there is the coverage from three drops. All right, now for our Goobert bolt. Twenty-five point four. Wow. Okay. So yeah, definitely the more you add, the more you get. And there is the coverage from that. And for the torqued Goobert bolt. Thirty-three point one. That's interesting. So there is diminishing returns for a fully torqued bolt. Although I imagine that will make a bigger difference on small bolts with like uh, one or two drops. But it looks like a big part of it was just the coverage that I got. So I think if I put the, the goober up higher on the bolt, maybe it would have had a different result. So now we're on to the 271 with three drops. 22.6. But it's a wow. Okay, so it actually stiffened up after I started turning it. Went up to 27. 27.9 right now, 28. Okay, so the highest I saw was 28. So that's what that looks like with just three drops. And there are a few spots in there where you can't see where it didn't completely cover it. So I'm wondering if Goober is gonna make a big difference on that. All right, and this is the torqued three drops. 24.3. Yeah, so 24.3. Which is interesting, it's not that much higher than the 243. Okay, so here we've got the thick application, the 271. All right, we got up to 41.1 on that one. Whoa, we are at 62.8 right now. And that is with no torque, 66. So quite a bit more. So definitely the more you use, the more you get. Okay, and for the torqued goobered red. Oh, that was weird. It's barely anything. 18.9, that was odd. So that has to, uh, that has to have been due to the application. Very interesting. So even though I put a bunch of it on there, all of it just kind of ran down to the bottom of the bolt. It didn't do that up here. How about that? So now we're using the 290, and this is the bolt that I put the thread locker on, and then I assembled. Wow. 15.8. Actually got a little bit tighter. Got up to 24.8. It's not really that much. So you can see it kind of just dripped, dripped down it. So I think if I uh, applied it higher, maybe that would have been different. And now for the torque nut. Wow, barely anything again. 23. 28, so it's actually tightening as I'm loosening it. We're at 38.8 so far. 58. Getting tight now. 70. All right, so it went above 70, which is beyond what this can actually read. What's weird is that I was able to break it loose easily, but then it tightened up. So, what would cause that? It all it balled up. Okay, so as I moved it, it kind of thickened. Interesting. Okay, yeah, so we're beyond 70 foot-pounds with that one. So this I got set to 80 foot-pounds. I want to see if I can get a click out of that. Oop. Pretty tight, but it didn't click, so somewhere between 70 and 80 foot-pounds. 
So it definitely has a lot to do with the application. And I think Dave was right about it balling up because we didn't have anything up here when we started. The nut was down here. So that means as we were moving the nut up, it was actually pushing the material up. All right, for the last one, this is the one that I put on after assembly. So because this is wicking, theoretically it should work kind of like a penetrating oil to where it works itself down inside the threads. That's what it's designed to do. So we're going to see what we can get out of that. Okay, so not as much. We're at 19. Okay, it is increasing again. We're up to 32. 45. 49.5 right now. All right, so the highest we got out of that was 49.5, and that was pure wick. And then the last nut is the one that we torqued down to 15 foot-pounds and then applied. Yeah, that's crazy. It breaks free at about 19 foot-pounds, but that's when it actually... I'm guessing he's right, just balls up. So we're at 49.4. Yeah, I think 49.4 is about as much as we're gonna get. So I was able to, to remove that torque very easily, but then getting it to continue moving, that's where it becomes more interesting. Okay, so that is what we got just from wicking. So there we go, interesting stuff. I learned a couple of things, but I think the biggest thing that I learned was just that the, uh, the effectiveness of it has a lot more to do with how it's applied rather than the actual grade itself. But as long as you apply it consistently, it is still going to be in that order as far as how heavy duty you want it. So yeah, that was pretty cool.